The origin of the term hip-hop is the subject of some debate. It's most widely credited to Cowboy Keith, a member of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, who apparently first used the words to mimic the marching of army troops when teasing a friend who was enlisted, and he liked the rhythm enough to later use it in some stage performances. There are plenty of other theories though, like that hop has its roots in the Lindy Hop dance of the 1920s, or that hip might have come from the West African word to see or to be enlightened. But however these two words came together, their partnership is actually locked in place by a mostly unknown rule of the English language. If we take a look at similar words like ping pong, king kong, kit kat, chit chat, tick tock, clip clop, you'll notice a structure. The word with the I is always first, followed by the A or O. This structure is made clearer with longer words like tic tac toe or ding dang dong. The order is always I A O, and messing with this will never sound quite right. This is called a blout reduplication, and while linguists acknowledge the strength of this rule, it's a little unclear as to why it happens. Leading research suggests that the I is preferred first because it's a high vowel, meaning that the tongue is in a higher position when it's pronounced, and might be characterized as being quicker, lighter, and suggesting that something else will follow. A or O sounds are longer and lower, and possibly more conclusive. In his book The Elements of Eloquence, linguist Mark Forsyth mentions this rule in a chapter on hyperbaton the technical name for when words are written in the wrong order. He also talks about another subconscious rule that many are mind blown to find that they unknowingly do, which is the rule of adjective order. Without realizing it, when we describe something with multiple adjectives, we actually arrange them into an order by type. Looking at Timeless Masterpiece, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, the three adjectives are arranged by type in the order of size, shape, origin. This isn't random, and perfectly fits within the established order of adjectives, the full order being opinion, size, age, shape, colour, origin, material, purpose, and then noun. Following this, we can have an interesting little old curved silver Japanese steel fighting sword, but messing with this structure will sound odd. As Forsyth says, it's an odd thing that every English speaker uses that list but almost none of us could write it out. There are exceptions though, like Little Red Riding Hood, whose adjectives you'll note are in order, encountered a big bad wolf, not a bad big wolf as the rule suggests that she should have. And this is because our old friend a blout reduplication intervened and the adjectives were switched so that our tongues could move from the I in big to the A in bad. We do this with names as well, Ever wondered about the order of celebrity couplings like Kim and Kanye, Ellen and Portia, Fred and George, David and Victoria, William and Kate, or Jake and Amir? Which name goes first? Turns out there is a kind of checklist for determining which order is natural. Let's first take a look at the fictional couple, Tim and Charlotte. Having Tim first works for a number of reasons. Firstly, as we've seen in a blout reduplication, our tongues get to move from the I and Tim to the A and O of Charlotte. There's also a strong tendency to have the name with the fewest syllables appear first, and this is probably linked to the idea that we prefer to speak in a certain rhythm. It's this rhythm that makes Shakespeare's writing so good, and it goes stressed syllable, then unstressed syllable. A name with one syllable will always be stressed, while and will always be unstressed, and a name with more than one syllable is more likely to have the first one be stressed. But having Charlotte appear first might work as well. Linguists argue that names that are more difficult to say will often go first, and Charlotte boasts a few consonant pairs, as well as the hard T at the end. We're also more likely to put Charlotte first if we know her better, or she is more famous or notable. We see this with royal family members William and Kate. By all means, Kate should go first. She has fewer syllables, the syllable rhythm feels more right, and the hard T means her name is harder for our mouths to say. But of course, William has been in the spotlight his entire life, and it wouldn't feel right to have him second, at least in this case. This is in line with other research that suggests we have a strong tendency to put male names first. 
This is said to be down to male names generally being shorter and having more obstructive consonants like T's, K's, and J's, but also because we're more familiar with them. The name James was listed as the eighth most popular male name in the 1990s. And in fact, it had made the top 10 list for the previous 12 decades, stretching back to 1880. Actually, if you picked out any top 10 popular name in this time span, its top 10 popularity lasted for an average of 4.25 decades. If we compare this to the list of popular female names, Mary makes it 10 out of 12 times, but the average popular female name is only popular for an average of 2.22 decades. Linguists argue that because popularity in female names changes more often, this causes an instability where we generally feel less familiar with female names, and are therefore more likely to put them after male names. This is being challenged by the rise of names that are original, from other languages, or are gender neutral or non-binary. But someone who bucks this trend altogether is Kim Kardashian. Not only are we more familiar with the name Kim generally, but Google Trends shows us that Kim just edges her husband when it comes to fame. On top of that, her name boasts fewer syllables and has the higher vowel. Twins Fred and George Weasley then make for an interesting case, though Fred clearly takes pole position with a higher vowel and more difficult D consonant. This checklist of properties applies outside of names as well. How else do we decide the orders of peanut butter and jelly, salt and pepper, knife and fork, Dungeons and Dragons? These word partnerships are known as irreversible binomials, or freezes, because the order is irreversibly frozen in place. Can you imagine the risk to society if you were to switch any of these words around? Often they are frozen in place for chronological reasons. At a bed and breakfast, you do things in that order, bed, then breakfast. But often it's not that simple. Why do cookies come before cream? Why do stars come before stripes? The checklist we made earlier can answer some of these questions, but there are so many exceptions to every possible rule that there's no golden recipe for word order. What is clear is that someone learning English often won't find these pairs in a dictionary, and will have to discover and learn them on an individual basis. Until we know more, we can at least be curious that in the language many of us think we know so well, there is actually a lot more than we thought.